Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori. And today I've got a different kind of video for you. It's sort of about a stitching video, but more about how I store my patterns. I got a lot of questions and I thought I would do a quick video for you on how I go about keeping my patterns organized. Now this can translate into my knitting, cross stitching. It just, you know, whatever I have patterns for. I kind of do the same process um, for most of my crafty business. Um, and I love these bags. These are mesh and plastic and they have a zipper and they're relatively inexpensive. Um, there will be a link to my Amazon store down below. And if you look in there under crafty goodies or crafty goodness or craft supplies, I don't remember what I called it. These bags are in there, but they are, um, they're pretty sturdy and stable. And also on the top here, you can put a, a label, hook it from the zipper if you want. So I use these for storage purposes. So they come in all different colors and I just pack, bought one package. So what I do is I sort my patterns by type generally. These are all, and I can show you a few of them, PDFs. So most of my PDFs, I guess I should say. And a lot of them were free patterns or freebies that were given out during the start of the pandemic. Like this long dog sampler, it, it's called Pandemic. It was a free printable. And I don't know if any more of these are still out there, um, but this was a long dog sampler, Pandemic. It's a large chart and they gave it away. Um, <clears throat> I think this one I got off of Etsy. Hi, Alex. Yep, I'm talking. Um, again, these are just little ornaments, some Christmas ornaments that I want to do. I also got a pack of Halloween ornaments that I wanted to do. Um, some Easter. I did a couple of these. I made little pillows for my Easter tray. Um, and then these I can't show you because there's no cover. Well, this one I can. I believe this one was a freebie as well. It's a fox. It's called Light. And this was Barbara Anna Designs put this out. And then the rest of these I can't show you because there's no cover photo. And they're not mine to share. And so you would be able to see the entire pattern. So these are all really just charts that I may or may not go back and revisit, but these are all ones that I've printed off either free or purchased like on Etsy, mostly freebies. And when I, if you order from certain suppliers or like one, two, three stitch or some Etsy sellers, they'll send you freebie charts sometimes. And those are mingled in here. And then these are my purchased charts most of them or were gifted to me from ordering supplies and i honestly try very hard not to have more than i can possibly handle so this was a free these two are freebies this is ones i purchased recently that's a biscornu from the tiny modernist uh this is a cat from the tiny modernist oh i purchased this it's a little bunny. I love these littles to do in between larger projects. And then we were all gifted these. I got the unicorn and I know there was a llama as well from the Tiny Modernist at a retreat I went to. And then when I went down to Keepsakes, I purchased this Plum Street sampler pattern and it's uh, dogs. I love it for Christmas stitching. Just, I mean, just different patterns I've picked up. This is Lizzie Kate. It's coffee themed, obviously. Uh, freebie. I think I got this one at the retreat. It was on the giveaway table and just says Halloween is in the air. The moon is full. Be Sorry, with. could you say that again? <laughs> no. My watch thought I was talking to Sita Sealy. I was not. Okay. So just, I mean, these are just different charts, a freebie. And then I purchased this one and this was a free chart for Ukraine that I want to stitch. 
So honestly, I don't have a ton of like excess patterns because again, I'm trying not to make buying patterns a whole separate hobby than stitching patterns. But these are in here because these are little ones mostly that I want to do in between. I have two whips going on and a whip is a work in progress, W-I-P. I have two of them and they're pretty large. When I do my next floss tube um, where I show you the things I'm working on, I will show you those two that I'm in the process. Actually, I have more than two. I think I have three that I'm currently working on. Well, my temperature chart and then those other two. It doesn't matter. I'll show them to you. And then I have partially kitted stuff or kitted things. And they still will go in these bags until I'm ready to start them. And then they'll go into a, a project bag, which is something I've sewn or purchased. Um, next video will go through all the stuff that I'm currently working on. But, so this was, I wanna start this after I finish my Nevermore. And this is Dark Crosses by Modern Folk Embroidery. And it says, all are equal in death. I love this. I think this is done more with a cream, cream colored floss, but I think I'm gonna do it in the B5200, which is like white, 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 but we'll see. I did buy some black. Now I chose to go with an Ada cloth for this because it's gonna be easier for me to see. And this is a 16 count so there's 16 threads per inch so it's a little smaller and I think it's equivalent to a 32 count linen and if I look at the pattern I believe it tells me most patterns will tell you that okay so this Woeful piece of embroidery measures 127 crosses in width and 190 in height. Stitch over two threads on 32 count linen or over one on 16 count Ada. It's gonna measure eight inches wide by 12 inches tall. So I went with the Ada just because it's easier to see. So this kit is really ready for me to go. I have my fabric, my flosses, and my pattern. Now, the only thing I will do is photocopy this pattern, and I photocopy it for my own use. I don't share my patterns. I photocopy so I can write on them and scribble and cross off the stitches that I've already made so I don't get lost in what I'm doing, and then I throw those away. I don't share, but I do copy for my own personal use. And then same thing in here. I've got two patterns. Um, I can do a quick show of that. That just says Ohio State. That was something, I think somebody mailed me that. And then I have this pattern here, which is for the state of Ohio. And I have photocopied this already to get working on that. Now I don't have fabric for this one, but I do have all my flosses collected. So I would consider this kitted up. I just need to get some fabric picked out for it. So if it's something like I said that I'm interested in stitching or I would like to put the kit together, I keep them in these and that way it's ready to go. When I'm ready for a new project, I can just sort through, I can just grab one and go get ready. Um, and I do have downstairs a couple going as well that I haven't started. This one, again, I don't have the fabric for, but it is a printed pattern. This one is Sarah Spencer. It is from Hands Across the Sea. It's a little gem, so it shouldn't be too large. It's a smaller um, sampler. And the little girl's name is Sarah Spencer, and I love it. She even put her S backwards. So this will be my first sampler recreation when I start this. I just haven't started it. It's a larger endeavor for me. So I'm wanting to finish at least one of my bigger projects that I have on the go. And then this is where I'm keeping patterns that I have finished if I didn't throw it away. Like PDFs I throw away pretty much. I happen to have kept this, this one. Um... So I can't share this because it's a PDF, so we don't pass those, but I could share these. 
And this one I stitched a couple years ago. I can't remember what year, 2020, I think. Yeah, 2020, I stitched this Suffrage Act. And it was a patriotic piece. I still haven't finished it. Like it's done, but I haven't made it into a pillow or a frame. And I finished that. And this is a Red Cottage by Plum Street Sampler. And that's actually, you can't see it, but it's right there. I can grab it. Let me grab it. I probably should dust it anyway. So this I finished in a shadow box. And I just took some gingham fabric and stretched it. And then I pinned. And you're going to get some glare. I pinned it down. But this was my first fully finished object that I ever stitched up. I have other projects that I finished. This is the first one I, the first one that I fully finished myself. So I should bring this downstairs because I like to display this for the summertime. I think it's a very summery piece. And that's this pattern right here. So this is all the, also another reason I like to photocopy my working copies because I make them a mess. Trust me when I say that they're a mess. And I think that is everything. Yeah, I went through all my patterns. So for me, can I have that? Oh, thanks. For me, I, you know, I behind me, there are two rows of these. Almost all of those are full of yarn. I'm not trying to do that again with stitching. So my goal with cross stitch is to have the things that I need to do the project. Now I am collecting floss, but I, again, hoping that I'm not gonna overdo it because I tend to do that. But um, I keep these all in a container and I, when I do my full floss tube, I'll show you the container that these are stored in. But I just wanted to share with you how I store my patterns because that was a big question. And since my patterns are very manageable for me to have, I keep them in here. Now, I know some folks use like the hanging file folders or binders. It just depends, you know, how many patterns that you have. But if you don't have a lot or you just want these for project bags, because this will hold an entire project. It'll hold, and a lot of people use these. It'll hold your pattern, your fabric, and your floss. And then you can see through it, which is handy. You'll see what's inside. I just prefer to put mine in the fabric project bags if I'm going to take them on the go because it's fun. Uh, but that's about it. I do have a couple more downstairs that are kitted up and ready to go. Um, I even have the fabric downstairs. But when I do my full floss tube video, I will go through my fabrics that I have on stash, how I store my floss because I, you know, everybody does that a little differently too. And I will show you all of my works in progress. All right, well, I hope that answered some questions that you had for me, and I hope you have a great day, and I will talk with you later.